Well, a couple of years ago, back in 2010, GNOME brought us the GNOME 3 desktop, which was unlike anything we'd particularly seen before and completely different from the GNOME 2 desktop. Ubuntu decided, no, nah, we don't like that direction, and instead worked on the Unity shell for GNOME, which then gave us the Unity desktop. And in the meantime, KDE, XFCE and LXDE decided, no, nah, we're happy how we are and just did a few tweaks here and there. Well, in all that, Linux Mint went, no, nah, we don't want to move on at all, we're happy being traditional. And this is exactly what they worked on, a more traditional style desktop. Something that the user of 2010 who liked GNOME 2 could relate to nowadays. And what we have here is Linux Mint 14, which was codenamed Nadia. It comes in two flavours. You've got Cinnamon and Mate, or Mate, depending on your pronunciation of it. And I've not seen an official answer of how it's pronounced, unlike Gnome, which you can see is pronounced as such. Right, Cinnamon is an attempt at the classic style desktop built on Gnome 3, whereas Mate is a fork of Gnome 2 and in an attempt to keep it traditionally styled. There's not a huge difference between them. You can still use the same sort of themes across both in Linux Mint, but honestly, probably just would better seeing an example of the two menus. Now, my previous video of Linux Mint 13, I did that. I showed you the differences side by side, but I'm not in this one, because I want to focus on more important things with this operating system. Now Linux Mint did a very fine job on art and design here, and they've included some of their own helpful programs. The Update Manager, uh, let's look at administration, like the Domain Blocker, Backup Manager. These are some useful programs they've added. So in terms of the design here and features, yeah, pretty good. But they made a catastrophic mistake in basing it on Ubuntu 12.10. And I slated Ubuntu 12.10 in terms of stability. It had a lot of issues with it, and Linux Mint have done nothing to solve that. I've got exactly the same bugs in Linux Mint that I suffered in Ubuntu 12.10. It's unstable, it is slow, I get errors on boot up, and so on and so on. Users' appreciation of desktop will probably go down a bit. So my recommendation is, if you're using Linux Mint 13, I would stick with that. Remember, that was built on Ubuntu 12.04, so it's actually supported for a lot longer than Linux Mint 14 is. That's only supported for 18 months. 13 was supported for five years. All the Linux Mint team needed to do was just improve the kernel in the system. It's very easy. They, didn't, they should not have used the Ubuntu kernel. They should have just gone with one of the other kernels, even in the Ubuntu's mainline repository, which is less tampered with and actually works a damn sight a lot better. I'm using the same sort of kernels here in Ubuntu 12.04, 3.6.5, 3.6.6. Way better than the 3.5 one that was released here. So catastrophic mistake and as such I'm going to drop their marks quite considerably. So we'll take a further look around the system just in terms of the design aspects and what we get in programs pre-installed. The layout of the system, so you've got the application menu an icon to show the desktop, launchers for Firefox, Terminal and File Manager. You've got notifications, settings, network connection, volume control, update manager, the calendar and an all windows button. So just have a quick look at the customizations of Cinnamon. So right click, we can change the background. Now we see here what I mean about the slow response to the system. So I've selected the wallpaper. Now come on, change it. Oh, you know, sort of finally, let's get there in the end. It's like opening up Firefox. Come on. Oh, there we go. It's got there in the end. So just go on to like YouTube. See, it uses DuckDuckGo as a search engine. So to click on YouTube, click on a video, and we'll see it plays videos straight away. So straight out of the box, it's ready and working. So some more preferences on Cinnamon. So if we go up through the menu, preferences. Then up to Cinnamon settings. You can change the panel size. Now to redo this part of the recording because I had a crash here when I changed the panel height. So that was no good. Then on all settings, you've got various other settings you can change. So looking at themes, there's quite a few themes you can choose from. 
and I believe that the GNOME 2 themes are compatible with this latest version of Mint Display Manager. Some effects, so you've got a few compies like effects, but a bit more basic than, say, the full suite of compies. Now we'll take a look at the applications we have pre-installed. So under accessories, I'm not going to read all those out, they're about the same sort of accessories you'd expect to see on any Linux distribution. And the graphics, we have GIMP, Image Editor, let's just open that and find what version it is. So GIMP 2.8, so that's the latest single windowed mode. GFUM, Image Viewer, LibreOffice Draw and Simple Scan. Under Internet we have a Desktop Sharing, Firefox, Pigeon Internet Messenger, Thunderbird for Webmail, Transmission for Downloading Torrents, and XChat for IRC. Under Office you'll see we have the full suite of LibreOffice. Under Sound and Video so we have the Banshee Media Player, Brazio, Disc Burner, Gnome M Player, Movie Player, Sound Recorder and VLC. Opening up Banshee, but carrying on Banshee with the applications while we wait for it to open. Under System Tools, ah, System Monitor, let's have a look at that. So memory usage, now you see it's a bit lower than Ubuntu, and suitable, well not going to say for a very old machine, but certainly anything made within the last five years or so. I notice that's the AeroSnap type effects running, so it can automatically resize to half the screen. Right, let's recognise some audio files that I've got on here. Yep, okay. Well, it plays them. So again, all codecs are pre-installed. Administration, well, we've had a quick look there. Places. Yes, we'll have a look in here because Mint have provided their own file manager. So this is called Nemo. It's a fork of Nautilus 3.2 because that's another thing that Gnome are messing around with. It's Nautilus. So we've got a couple of videos on here. It's the same behaviour that you would expect in the older version of Nautilus. You've got thumbnails, video files in this case, but it'll do thumbnails for pictures as well. Okay, there's. But other than that, its behaviour is pretty similar, so you've got connector server, exactly the same as you would have had in Nautilus. So here's what I thought of Linux Mint 14. So easy to use? Yep, actually, it's quite an easy to use distro. It's a very good one for new users. Ease of installation? Yep. Got the GUI installer and it's easy enough to dual boot to install with something like Windows. Styling. Do you know, I've marked it down a bit now. It's fine, but there's nothing that special about it. Yeah, they've got some more themes in there, but I'm taking what the distro looks like out of the box. Boot up speed. I found it a bit slower than Ubuntu to boot up, so it's not particularly quick. Responsiveness. No, actually it's not particularly responsive, it is very slow to start opening applications. Number of bugs, yep, yeah. here's where the marks go down quite a bit. So I had several application crashes during testing, the application just froze and I had to just turn off the virtual machine. It's got the minor errors I'm getting on boot up because the AMD microcode drivers are missing. And so just overall it's fairly similar to Ubuntu 12.10 with its issues with the kernel. A selection of pre-installed applications. Yeah, well, they're making the distro for like new users, so actually it's quite a good selection of applications. You've got the codecs, you've got the full suite of LibreOffice, like GIMP. It's in good applications included. Number of applications available. They've added a couple of repositories, but really not enough to give it for me to give it many more marks than I gave Ubuntu. And you've got 32 and 64-bit versions. So good points. It's an ideal distro if you like a classic GNOME-style desktop. And a good distro for new Linux users. However, Linux Mint 13 is better, and this is what I suggest on the bad points. Is it a good point? I don't know. I just wanted to make the point there that Linux Mint 13 was better. Not the bad points there are. There's no attempt to correct the mistakes from Ubuntu 12.10, which would have been quite easy to do because the kernel should have just been replaced with a better, more upgraded one. So overall, I've given it 65%. That's pretty poor score and that's about the same score I gave Ubuntu. So thanks for watching, see you later.